and rejecting the spirituality and rejecting uh, where I came from. I think that's what I had because I wanted to fit into the society. I kind of was in denial, if that makes sense. Welcome to Warrior S Podcast. I am Christy Renee Obst, leading medicine woman and mentor for fierce feminine leaders. And ladies, that is why you are here, because you are fierce, you are feminine, and you are a leader. You have the capacity to lead your life, to stand strong in the power and in the vulnerability of who you are, to reclaim the complete woman, the complete package, to not shut down your heart, shield up your heart and hide, to be able to unapologetically stand up in your power and be you in the world doing what you want to do and leading your life how you want to lead it on this podcast we have real talks from real women it's not all just sunshine and rainbows we get into what it takes to activate and embody the fierce feminine leader that you are and own all of your womanly power. So get ready to be educated, inspired, motivated, open and activated on your journey to unlocking your fierce feminine nature. Okay, Warrioress, it's time to shine. In this episode, I sit down with Barbara May, modern mystic and host of The Barbara May Show, a beautiful podcast which makes spirituality fun. In this episode today, we talk about spirituality, energy, crystals, and manifestation. I hope you enjoy listening as much as I enjoyed sitting with this conversation. Let's jump in. Hello, Barbara. Welcome. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you very much for having me. So excited to be here. <laughs> yes, it's been it's been a long time coming. So I'm really, really happy to have this chat with you today. The first thing I want to ask is, what does spirituality mean to you? So um, I love this question. Um, so many people ask this much. Uh, so many people is asking me this question. So for me, it's it's a way of living. It's something very comforting. So the best way how I could describe it is that when you feel very, very tired and then you go to bed and you cuddle up to your pillow, <laughs> it's like coming back. <laughs> it's like coming back to where you came from. I don't know if that makes sense, but, but yeah, it's just very comforting, very comforting, very safe. Just, I don't know. It just feels very nice. I know, like, it's funny for anyone listening, like, they might hear that and be like, oh, but if you actually just, like, feel that, you know, that feeling of, yeah, when you come and, like, cuddle your pillow and you're just exhausted, it, it is that inner safety, that inner security. And, yeah, I love how you said it's a way of living because I think there's a real stigma um, on spirituality. Like, there's a lot of thoughts that it should be a certain way or – it has to look this way or this isn't spiritual and that is spiritual. But yeah, I'm, I'm a bit the same, you know, it's like it's a way of living and it's your own growth through life and your own awareness of your own energy being and consciousness and yeah, all of that stuff. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about energy today. So that's exciting. Thank you so much for bringing up. And no, I just want okay. to say, I just want to say for what you said, I think people, but I think the problem what you have over here is that people labeling things we do have to have things labeled we do have to definitely for things to become more clear to us but I think that's why because that's why people feel that way because things which are labeled then you have a chance to question them you know and and we all were born in spiritual uh, in this spiritual world in this spirituality but we just do you, know, do you know where I'm going with that totally yeah yeah, I think this goes for whether it's spiritual or not. Like you said, we, things need labels, but then we kind of get like pulled into the label, like stereotyped into this is how this specific role needs to look, be and act. And that kind of like just wrecks our complete freedom of expression in a sense, because it's like anti-spiritual, I guess, because it's like, oh, now I have to fit in this box when you're, you're like so vast and so expansive that 
there's no box to fit in. Mm. I was yesterday, I was at the airport and, um, and there was an announcement. And in the announcement, the lady said, please be mindful of blah, 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 blah. And it made me laugh because the word mindful came everywhere <laughs> about two years ago. Do you know what I mean? Like somebody just decided that, okay, we need to start using this word and it has got this meaning and there is this thing called mindfulness and yeah yeah just Ab- yeah absolutely it's funny. yeah and, but it's good I think you know this like oh to start to become mindful to start to become aware of things you know that's really where it all starts and I know for you like you grew up in quite a spiritual family right yeah yeah I did I grew up in in a family full of artists um, it was a very contemporary spiritual a way of living. So it wasn't like my parents were never hippies, you know, um, but they were very spiritual. So we always talked about energies and mindfulness was just a normal thing. It's just everyday living. So the way how they teach you now how to live a mindful life, that is how I've been brought up. So Isn't, I was very lucky. Yeah, it's so lucky and it's so vastly different to kind of how I grew up. So it's so cool to talk to people from these different kind of upbringings and just how that that is. That's a way of life. And I think that's so special and amazing. And I hope that like the future generations have more access to, well, this mindfulness is a way of life because I feel like I feel like I would have had a lot of better handle on a lot more stuff in my life if that's the way I was um, brought up. But what I was going to ask you with that is there a moment that you felt like, even though you were brought up in a very kind of spiritual, self-aware environment, was there a moment in your life that you were like, oh, I'm having like a bit of a deeper awakening here? Mm, I think I always had the awakening. I think it was going, it, it was happening to me throughout the day, like throughout my life. I don't think that I was never, I have never experienced that. Oh my goodness, this is spiritual. Uh, awakening but I think I had the opposite of it yeah I, I don't totally, know if that makes sense yeah kind I totally of going to get that yeah I, rejecting the spirituality and rejecting uh, where I came from I think that's what I had because I wanted to fit into the society so I kind of was in denial if that makes sense um my parents as I said they were artists so they were very open to things um I felt very protected I felt very loved in the environment I grew up with um I was surrounded by crystals I said this on um, somebody else's podcast recently I have had um people used to come to our house and bring like chocolate or uh toys you know like as, as as people do but my brother and I used to get crystals so people gave us crystals as as a presents you know my my dad had a connection in Japan and um and every year we received this package from from Japan um for Christmas and it was full of um things like I don't know like cup for good luck and uh, incense sticks and you know like uh, chives and this is what what we kind of grew up with so yeah and I think until until the school times I realized that there are other people who just don't go through the same thing don't experience the same stuff so I just felt very different and I tried to fit into society so to answer your question have I ever had or have I ever experienced a spiritual awakening I would say that I have experienced the, what do you call it? Like, it's, like a, it's like a, like a spiritual suppression or something. Yeah, I guess. yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Spiritual suppression, yes. Yeah, that's super interesting. Like I remember as a little girl, because it's all in us as children and then as we grow up and I guess that kind of speaks back to the labeling as well it's like oh well the other kids think I'm different because I've got all these crystals and stuff so then I better go and play with I don't know whatever or dress like this or be like that to kind of fit in and we start rejecting but as a little girl I remember having like all of these gemstones and crystals and I used to like my dad tells me about it all the time like oh I used to go and 
hand this one to you. This is medicine and this is for happiness and this is, you know, you just innately know as a kid and then somehow that, whether it's from other children trying to fit in or from your family or wherever it's come from, we we do tend to like reject our own natural nature. And I love like how you said like, oh, the spirituality is kind of like a coming home. You know, you come home at the end of a hard day or a tired day and you hug that pillow and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm home. And so I guess it's like the suppression and then the reawakening again, like getting mm. back into everything that was just so natural to you as a child. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was, I was very aware of energies since I was, since I was very little. So I know you want to talk about it later. So yeah, go for it. More questions, dive, but, dive um, into it, go for it. Yeah. Um, so I was always able to see energies and I was able to feel them. So I have this first memory from the first ever memory I have. And I remember I was in a room and in that room, um, well, I know what the room looked like because I have seen the pictures of it, but I see it through colors. So this is how I kind of um, notice the energies and all that kind of stuff and I feel and, and et cetera. So I have this, this huge, I mean, it's a huge bubble of emotion, which I can kind of translate into, into the language. So I could tell you that the room, the room was cold, but it was very kind. I felt very safe. Um, that was a lot of emptiness on some side of the room and the other room, the other side of the room was full of sweets, even though the sweets were not there, but the sweets represents the sweet feeling, you know. And anyway, so this is this is how I kind of was aware of it. And I don't think that my parents knew what I was able to do. Um, but they uh, everything what I said and everything what I believed, um, they always supported me. I was never put down. So when I went to school and when I was expressing myself the same way how I was expressing myself at home, I was I wasn't understood by children. And um, and that led to going through so many, so many, so many different schools and, and trying to fit and trying to kind of hide um, behind um, this veil um, <laughs> of being a normal child. And I don't like to use normal child because, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So that was, that was kind of, um, I think that was kind of something very interesting. And then later in life, I have a psychic um, who I call every single time I feel um, down or something is happening in my life. And, uh, and she said to me, she said, she says, you do exactly what I do. And I was like, what is that? And she said, you read energies. And I realized, yes. And I was like, this is exactly what I've been waiting for. For 30 years, I could not understand what is it that I'm doing differently than somebody else does? Why do I respond to certain situations the way I respond to them? And why the people around me doesn't, don't understand my reactions? You know, like I used to have ex-boyfriends and, and, and they just were so frustrated with me. But I'm just thinking, I know what is going to happen. So you, you cannot be doing this because this person is trying to do that. And they were like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you know? So now I understand. <laughs> if you've got that ability or you are really sensitive, like I'm very much a feeler. I feel, yeah, it's like a feeling and a knowing. Like, yeah, you just know that this is the thing or this is what's going to happen or this is what's playing out. And it's a very hard thing to explain. And so, yeah, I think a lot of people who are very sensitive do kind of get that feeling of like oh I'm misunderstood you know people don't understand and I think it's challenging when you are whether it's like sensitive empathetic feeling knowing seeing like whatever that little gift is for you it's really challenging to yeah be able to express that and if you're feeling seeing and knowing something that maybe other people can't see themselves it can get really confusing to young minds so that's so beautiful that you had that moment where you're like oh finally like I finally it's like another coming home like yes I finally understand like why I'm here my gift yeah you know I used to play this game when I was little I used to guess what day of the week people were born 
So, um, so I looked at somebody and I was thinking, mm, I think you were born on Tuesday. And I never understood, like nine times out of 10, I was right, okay? And I never understood how is that possible? Because obviously the days of the week, they have their energies. So do the planets and so do the months and et cetera. But I could, when I look at you, I could tell what is that the energy you carry, if mm. that makes sense. You know, so it was anyway... So it was so funny. And then when she said to me, she says, oh, this is this is why. And I was thinking, oh, my goodness. And the new door opened to me. Yeah. And it's so wide. And it just makes so much sense. You're writing a book about energy right now. Is that correct? Yeah. So I have decided that I'm going to go ahead and write this down. <laughs> so explain people how they can read energies. Because as you know, you know, you work as a spiritual healer. There are so many different types of energies, which... Um, we can work with and if we work with them and if we tap into those energies things will happen so we are made out of energy it's scientifically proven and I always say this sentence and I keep saying it all the time it's scientifically proven for those people who are not sure yeah who you know that we are made yeah yeah so we are made out of energies and we have our own unique energy and so do crystals so so does the table the chair the room and everything and there is there isn't like a hundred types of energies, but there is like a million, billion, trillion, eternity, different types of combinations of the energies. Like we are all unique. It's all very unique, isn't it? Yeah. And so powerful to actually allow people to kind of start to understand that and tap into that themselves. I think yeah. the world would be in a very different place right now if we were all just that little bit more aware and tuned into our own energy field no absolutely i i completely agree with you i think it's a huge um stepping stone to manifestation healing um empowerment and i just i i think it's very i think it's very important very very important i, I completely agree yeah i don't think with the work even the work i do you know i've studied with holistic health for the past and healing for the past 10 years and it's really when I started to get into the spiritual and the energetics and really started to like understand and work with that that my whole practice changed and not just my whole practice and the results for my clients like my whole life changed like you said oh wow there's a big open door now and you just start to get it which is amazing um so I'd love to talk about crystals because I think it's just such a beautiful and powerful topic. And firstly, what is what is your favorite crystal right now? What are you working with currently? So I haven't got a favorite crystal because I keep re rediscovering new crystals and their power. So I only talk about, so firstly, I only talk about crystals which work for me. Okay, so there are crystals that many, many, many people talked about, but I have never worked with. I'm aware of them. Um, but they don't do much for me. So I only talk about the crystals which which are um, which are powerful for me. So at the moment, right now, I am working with a fire quartz. And the reason is because I'm trying to manifest something in my life. <laughs> so that is, that is the reason why I've been working with it. Um, but I do work with Bumblebee Jasper as well. Um, and absolutely my favorite, favorite, favorite crystal in a whole wild world is pyrite. Um, but this love towards the stone usually lasts about five or six months <laughs> and then I move on to another. And uh, an explanation for that is because I need a different type of energy to work with. So I do love all of it, but yeah, I do swap around. Yeah, for sure. I um, do you know what? I don't even know what this crystal is anymore. If I showed you a picture, you'd be like, this is what it is. So maybe <laughs> I'll take a picture and send it to you lately. But I have a bunch of like a collection and there's this blue one. And um, I just was drawn to it the other day. I was like, I need to pick that up and put it in, you know, those beautiful little um, macrame necklace holders. Um, put that in there and I and I knew the exact spot it needed to sit on and I wore that all day and I just being tuned into the subtle energy it made just such a shift for me physically energetically mentally emotionally I was dealing with like sore throat and I'd had a cold and I was really struggling with like my throat and my thymus kind of area and it just made all the difference like nearly instantaneously like everything just went away it was incredible 
sometimes I even forget like the absolute power of crystals. Like, you know, you just don't, um, you just get on with your life and you don't actually think like, oh my God, so powerful. So that was just like another little reminder for me to go, man, I just, there's just so much respect and reverence for these powerful things and the energy that they hold. Yeah, absolutely. And they hold, they hold very individual energies like we talked about it before. Um, and they're very, very, very powerful, extremely, extremely powerful. The incredible thing about crystals is that um, we can activate them with our intuition. And yeah, that's just, I think that's absolutely groundbreaking when you think about that, how it can work. Um, when I teach about crystals and when I talk about crystals, and I just want to say this to you because don't worry about the fact that you don't know the name of the crystal because that is right. actually not very <laughs> important. Yeah, um, it's I always show the crystal to the person and I say, describe it to me. Okay, so we talked about reading energies. Everybody is able to read those energies. Mm. Every single person is able to do that, but you need to tap into it. So I'll show you crystal and you can tell me, well, it's calm. I was like, okay, well, does it feel heavy for you? Um, no, yes. Does it feel peaceful? Uh, does it feel fiery? You know, like I talk about fire quartz. So we, the reason why I have chosen fire quartz is because I need to add a bit of spice to <laughs> things. And to get the manifestations, the so, yeah. <laughs> so the shit is happening. You know, so so it's just like all, all those kind of things. And so many people do say that when you go to the shop, the crystal does pick you. Yeah, but sure. it's actually not right. You pick the crystal because you know within you what you are looking for and what you need. And then you pick the crystal and then you go home and then you can Google it and then you can find out, oh, okay, so this crystal is for sore throat. So maybe that's why I picked it because I do have a sore throat. I love him absolutely love them yeah love I remember them. so many times walking into a crystal shop being like have my mind set on like this is what I want and going in there and like letting that go and just like that's not what I want at all like my body's just being drawn to a different whole different section of the shop here and I think that's really beautiful too kind of that not knowing what it does mm. and tuning in yourself like you said I think that that's super powerful for people to most do most common one what i come across um is actually not a health issues but people do pick stones which are heavy because of to be grounded mm. so when they do come to the crystal shop most of them do pick like a darker stones so kind of like you know activate the root chakra and, and yeah so i just wanted to add that so definitely people who are listening do this experiment because it is fabulous <laughs> absolutely it's so fun too do you program your crystals? Like when you get them home, a new crystal from the shop, what's your process? What do you do? So I touch the crystal. They tell you that you need to wash it because obviously you need to remove the energy, but I always do touch it. Mm -hmm. I always try to connect with the crystal and then, then I wash it. So at the moment I'm working with towers. So it's like kind of obelisk looking, um, looking shape. And that is again, because I'm trying to manifest something. So I'm pointing things towards the universe. Um, so I'm really into towers at the moment and so, yeah so trying to connect I have one right here so this is a sunstone and I'm and I'm holding and I'm playing with it um, and I have it like next to me there, there are so many ways you can do some people bury the crystals some people um, use a sound or a sage or a palo santo or whatever you know to kind of cleanse them you always have to cleanse a crystal it's like one the most important thing what you need to do is like you, you know, when you're going through a very heavy day, you need to have a shower, not because you are dirty, yeah. but because you just need to remove whatever is left in your energetic field. So the crystals work exactly the same way. You won't be able to perform freshly if you are not fresh. So again, crystals are exactly the same. So yes, yeah, so that will be probably my answer. Yeah. And so you would, when you, um, cleanse the crystals would you use like incense sage palo santo i know i've even uh like take them to the beach and like salt water as well yeah so but you have to be very careful with salt water because some of the crystals are very sensitive to yeah, salt a bit porous yeah yeah so i wouldn't do that and i don't have a beach close to me i would love to do that though <laughs> but no i will use a very cold water so that's what i will do that will be my technique um i will use a sound moonlight 
It's very common. Yeah, so put them up, charge them. And I think every single person who's got crystals should do that once a month in a full moon, just should leave them out. Absolutely. But yeah, mostly the connection with them and just try to rub your energy on them just to, you know, it's like cuddle them a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Make them feel better so they perform. <laughs> they always so perform. I, uh, that just gave me a vision. My, bro- my little brother, when he was little, used to fall asleep with like Thomas the Tank Engine trucks. Like, like, Thomas the Tank Engine um, toys, sorry. So these hard toys and he would just sleep with them and cuddle them and it just got me this vision of him and I was like, I'm just going to take all my crystals to bed and cuddle them even though they're these hard things. <laughs> Do you know, crystals are great to have in bed with because some of them help you to sleep but not only that, um, they enhance your dreams. So for Ooh. example, Labradorite, if you are looking into some very very cool dreams use a labradorite put that under your pillow it does work again i wouldn't be talking about something which i haven't tried myself so i have slept with labradorite several times (laughs) and i loved it (laughs) i love that and um what about for have you used anything personally to help you sleep or does the labor i can't even say that ever labradorite labradorite (laughs) yeah does that help you sleep as well yeah um so it does um it does help you sleep it really it really 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 makes you have very deep dreams but to help you sleep and this is the most common one many many people using it is amethyst it's really good for headaches as well and it does work i actually have an amethyst on my bedside table and i sleep like a dream just make sure you cleanse it and um and just put it next to your bed, under your pillow, or under your bed anywhere. Away from the sunlight again, because amethyst is very sensitive to sunlight, so it will lose its colour. Yeah. So amethyst should not be put on the sunlight for anyone who's listening. That is good to know. So tell me about your crystal grids that you've been working with. I love crystal grids. They're incredibly powerful, and they always work for me. I set my crystal grids probably every two months or every three months I do that. You can do it every single month. Um, is based on a sacred geometry for those ones who don't know sacred geometry is everywhere around us everywhere everything is made out of sacred geometry pumpkin seeds (laughs) everything literally everything we are our dna is made out of sacred geometry okay so it's very powerful when those uh, patterns get activated that is when the magic happens so we can activate them by crystals and activate them with the energy of the crystals and i have done a crystal grid to manifest my house i have done it to manifest um, my will at one point um i think i have done it for energy as well they work really 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 well for uh for enhancing the energy so obviously you use a different pattern so if you were talking about the energy it kind of looks like a snail um I'll, I'll work a lot with Merkaba, um which is incredible shape as well so i would uh, choose the pattern of the sacred geometry for those people who don't know again about them i will just go on the internet and i will find a pattern and have a look which is talking to you which pattern is talking to you and then read about it because i think it's a fun game because you are attracted to a certain pattern for a reason and then I would set up my crystal grids and normally the way how you set it up you set up with a stone which you put in the middle of a grid and then that stone is representing the title so it's like if you're talking about a book so that is your title yeah how to get what I want in my life (laughs) and then and then you just yeah so for example if you were wanting to attract wealth you would put a pyrite in the middle and the stones which goes around are usually the subtitles. So those are the ones which add things to the story. So I want to attract wealth, so I'll put a pyrite in the middle. And then the stones which goes around would be, for example, I want the home to be harmonious. I want it to be healthy. I want it to be loving. So you choose those crystals. And then you place them around. So if you were working with a star, for example, just to be just to be clear, because obviously there are different types of shapes of sacred geometry, we would put those crystals on the star points and obviously the main stone would go into the middle. So now we need to activate the grid and uh, we can activate the grid with a little 
uh, Chris took Ford's pointy bits, which we put in between the crystals on the point on on a star. We can activate it with a wand. We can activate it with our mind. We can activate it with a candle. We can. There are so many ways of how you can activate it. And then we place the grid. We place it somewhere safe where children can't get to it, where animals can't get to it, or cleaners can't get to it. Because yeah. I had to have done a grid, and then my cleaner came and she cleaned the house, and she cleaned the grid, and she put the stones <laughs> next to the grid. <laughs> One by one next to each other <laughs> so if you don't want that to happen to you make sure you do your grid somewhere else and uh, somewhere safe and um what you can do you can add candle you can sprinkle a little bit of cayenne pepper all over it because cayenne pepper speed things up so again you work with the energy so you think about what does cayenne pepper symbolizes you know if you want to you can put salt himalayan salt around your grid that is for protection yeah so again if we didn't have a salt we wouldn't be here because salt literally kills all the bacteria the negativism and all that kind of stuff if you want to you can add garlic you know just literally just work with the energies and you can light up a candle if you want. You can do like a little ritual. Um, and that's pretty much it. And you probably wonder when is the best time to do the crystal crit. And that is on a new moon. Oh, coming up. How exciting. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and how long you want to have your crystal grid for. So I would probably have it anything from 72 hours or up to um, the dark moon, which is the one day before new moon. That's where I would kind of dismantle it. Or you can have it the whole time. You can have it for two months. You can have it for three months. Just make sure you return to the intention. You think about it every single time. You look at the grid. You know why you did that. It's not just something you have set up and it's been laying there for months, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, like you want to give you it can... your energy kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's, so, so that's pretty much that. You can also write a little letter to universe if you want to. Oh, gosh, there is so many things you can do. But it does work. It does work. Make sure you cleanse your crystals, obviously, before you do that. That's super amazing. And I know you've been working with vision boarding as well. So I love vision boards. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of vision boards. I have done a vision board two times in my life. And, um, and both times it worked. Oh, gosh. It's so scary how much it works. <laughs> yeah, be careful what you wish for, right? <laughs> absolutely. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, I think yeah. it's that power of, you know, manifestation. I found personally is like when you're working with things like a vision board or even crystal grid or any sort of ritual, like the amount of focus and energy and devotion that you personally put into it, plus, you know, the crystals and you know, whether you're working with guides or masters or whatever you're working with that come and support that, it just, like you, like you said, kind of like the cayenne pepper, it, it speeds it up and it just magnifies it and allows you to kind of get into alignment with that constantly because I think in our lives it's so easy to get pulled out, you know, with everything that's going on. So for me, working with things like this, like I can return to that on a daily basis and kind of yeah. realign myself. Yeah, and that's why everybody says to you, says you have to be mindful because we are manifesting throughout our lives. We're manifesting every single day, right? So we're manifesting by talking, we're manifesting by writing, and we're manifesting by thinking. Mm. and and that's why it's so important i can share this funny story with you i have done a vision board because i wanted to find the partner i have been in a several relationships they were not working very well and um, i haven't found the person and um and i have done this vision board and the vision board was all about wealth love and health and i was looking through the magazines and i was cutting out the pictures and i am very attracted to men with the blonde hair and green eyes and i was looking for the man with the blonde hair and the green eyes. And I'm going through these pictures and I couldn't find it. But I have found this man with a black hair from like backside at all, dancing on um, in this uh, country house. You know, she was wearing like a wedding dress. He wore a suit. And, and I was thinking, well, she looks like me, like she's got a blonde hair and he's got black hair. And I'm just thinking, well, it's a man and a woman, you know, representing the laugh. And I was just, I'm just going to put it on my vision board. Well, guess who I married? I married a guy in a country house. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it out in. But with the black hair, tall, 
and he is wearing a suit every <laughs> single day because he is working in a very high profile job and he's constantly wearing a suit and during the week during the weekends he is wearing a shirt or a blazer well not all the time but you know what I mean so so it's just like seriously like be careful what you wish for of course I love him you know and I'm very happy and I'm very fortunate etc but I I wasn't looking for that man <laughs> so. it's such a cool story and I, I have to yeah sorry go ahead I was gonna say like most people we're just so unconscious of what we're thinking like I think it studies I think maybe two percent of what we actually think the drama that goes on in our head is conscious and usually 80 to 90 percent of that is replayed from like negative past experiences so when we're man when we're talking about manifesting it's like that's the stuff that's getting created you're just not aware of it so yeah when you do this vision board like you're bringing conscious choice and awareness to like what it is you want to create just make sure you pick the right picture in the magazine out <laughs> mm, no totally you know we we started dating and i have put on my vision board i have put a picture of this another country country hotel and behind it was a picture of like horses you know horse races and things like that and um he he proposed to me after three months of dating and six months after we got we got married and I remember until this day my friend was sitting next to me and she she was just trying to be funny about the vision board and she said to me she says oh what's there and I said oh that's the country hotel my my future husband is gonna take me for Christmas break to you know and he's like, how about the horses? And I was like, oh, you know, we're going to go to a lot of horse races and things like that. Every single thing what I said, it happened. We went to the country hotel for, we were only dating, we we're not married for this Christmas break. And uh, we done so many horse uh, races, you know, together. And it was just, it was just unbelievable. Like every single thing on that vision board came true. I just still can't get over it. Well, I can get over it, but I can't get over it how precise it was. It's just magical. And it's, yeah. for me, I'm like, oh, it's just so cool. I love hearing these stories. And yeah, I literally look at the life I'm living right now and, I'm, and I say to my partner all the time, like, we manifested this. Like, we manifested this. We said we were going to do it. We didn't put it down on a vision board, but, you know, we spoke about it all the time. We were constantly like, co-creating with the universe this is what we want this is what we want and the cool thing is like every time we've been in a sticky situation with money or whatever or we're like mm, we're not we're not really happy in this situation anymore it's not like we're stuck with it it's like well we created this cool let's create again like let's just start the creation conversation going and it just happens it just falls into place amazing absolutely i would love to ask you about your podcast i'd love you to tell me more about that because i think it's so amazing what you're doing um i love my podcast um i think the reason why i have set it up was because there were so many things out there happening around me which i didn't understand and nobody spoke about that i just wanted to share with the world and i think if people talked about it and if I have discovered a podcast like this when I was on the beginning of my spiritual journey or even like now, you know, it would be fantastic. So the podcast is there to kind of build the bridge between spirituality and the physical world and it's there to make spirituality fun and relatable I love it because I get to speak to so many incredible people like yourself and I can ask whatever I want so I get this like a private lesson you know <laughs> and I'm learning because we always do we always learn don't we um so so I love it and it's been doing really well which I'm absolutely incredibly grateful for and yeah I'm just I'm just so grateful I'm so grateful that I did it it's a huge achievement you know to kind of step out of your comfort zone and just talk and people listen they listen 100%, <laughs> yeah I, I remember even I, I think I thought about my podcast for about two months before I actually even recorded the first episode like you know I knew I was going to do it like I, I was like up for the challenge but it it took like an inner transformation to actually be able to get me to actually do it. And I remember feeling so nervous. Like I go back and listen to my first couple of episodes and I even think back to that. And I'm like, wow, I was so nervous. 
But now it's just, yeah, like you said, I get to speak to beautiful people, help them share their information, their knowledge. People get to listen and educate, inspire and just, yeah, help the world grow. And so, yeah, I love your podcast. I think it's amazing all the information you're sharing and the people you have on and, yeah, diving into that spiritual world and making it. Yeah, making it fun, like you said, making it fun and super informational too. It's great. Thank you. I think with the with the way how the world is going, you know, and how audio is growing and like I wish that I had the time to read the book, you know, but I don't. It, but it doesn't matter, you know, like there is just so much out there on the podcast. I'm a huge podcast addict. At one point I stopped listening to the podcast because obviously I was thinking, oh, I'm copying other people. I'm copying what they're saying, you know. I'm using their phrases and I just didn't want that. Um, but I went back to it. I have got about seven podcasts now, which I'm listening to, like binge listening literally, and I'm learning so much and I love it. Yeah, it the audio revolution is great even at the moment. Like I love reading books, but I'm a pretty slow reader. And a lot of the times it's just like not having time. So yeah, when you're driving to and from somewhere, you know, you can have a podcast on. At the moment, I'm listening to a few different audio books. So it's just a great way to bring awareness and education without yeah feeling like you've got to kind of think back to school like you've got to sit at a desk and read it's just so accessible all this information and yeah I think that's really powerful when people get the opportunity to put this good stuff in their ears the awakening process the awareness process is just gonna lift the world into a better place totally so is there anything else on your heart and mind that you wish to share today that I'm grateful for you having me on your podcast (laughs) (laughs) I think um um, I would like to say to your listeners if I could that um just to be aware of, of the energies around you and um and pick what resonates with you and when I say resonate I mean pick anything and everything what makes you feel happy and surround yourself with that so yeah that's what I would say (laughs) That's really beautiful advice. That makes me feel happy. And where can people find you? So I'm on Instagram, which is at Barbara May underscore. And Barbara is spelled B-A-R-B-R-A. And uh, my website is www.barbaramay.com. I have a Facebook page, but I'm very lazy. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Don't really use it. (laughs) And um, YouTube channel where I put my podcast. And yeah, I'm on Inside Timer as well. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you are loving what you have been hearing on this podcast and you are ready to take the next step on your journey, I would love to invite you into my free Facebook group, I Am Fierce Feminine. This Facebook group is a sisterhood of fierce feminine leaders really wanting to own the complete woman, integrate their power and their vulnerability to release their self-sabotage and achieve their highest potential without having to shut down or shield up their heart anymore. In this group, there are many free trainings and experiences to support you along your journey and the opportunity to be the first women to hear about upcoming programs and special offers that I have going on. So you can find I Am Fierce Feminine Facebook group on Facebook. Alternatively, follow the link in my bio on Instagram at Christy Renee Obst. Because when women claim their power and stand strong and secure in who they are without having to doubt their fierce feminine nature, We make massive shifts in our lives, in the lives of those around us, and in the world.